My name is Justin Dowels. I'm an associate at TU Delft, and my expertise is in machine learning. So being at the conference about digital history is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it's really interesting. This is joint work uh, with uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Andrea Nanetti from NTU in Singapore. Uh, and he's a historian, and uh, we, we actually we used to be neighbors on campus at NTU in Singapore, and then he started talking and he asked me, can we apply machine learning in history, in digital history? And then we started working together. So today I'll talk about what we have done uh, in recent uh, months. Um, this is also, of course, John work with many of my students, uh, bachelor students. This was a bachelor's uh, project. <clears throat> yes. Um, so I will first introduce a platform that uh, uh, Dr. Andrea Nanetti has uh, developed uh, together with uh, collaborators. It's called Engineering Historical Memory Platform. And then um, I'll talk about um, the tools that we have developed. And that, uh, these tools are part of that platform uh, EHM. Uh, e and uh, it's about uh, image query. So how to search uh, visual content in a, in a large database of images. And I will talk about uh, some basics of the, of the, of the algorithms. So of course it's a little bit technical because I'm a machine learning person. So I'll talk about a bit about the uh, underlying uh, mechanisms. Um, so EHM, Engineering Historical Memory, is a platform uh, which is for free. You can access it, and it gives you um, access to uh, primary historical sources in a convenient and user-friendly way. It's a kind of a, a search engine, if you will, that gives access to databases, historical databases. Um, text, images, etc. And um, yeah, it's something that uh, Andrea has been working on for many years now. And uh, we are glad to be able to contribute to the platform. So I will show now a video, and I hope you, the audio will get through at your side. What is EHM? EHM stands for Engineering Historical Memory. Its mission is to give free access to primary historical sources. EHM focuses on how societies around the world used to see each other in the transition between post-classical and early modern periods. Operators train students and has been recognized by top institutions from all over the world. At EHM, scholars and software engineers convert academic scholarship into dynamic and intuitive computer applications. In the EHM applications, you can explore high-resolution digital reproductions of the historical artifacts. Through digital markers, you can access content from scholarly books according to your interests and level of expertise. As an alternative, you can interactively gain new insights into historical information using geospatial visualizations and infographics. Additionally, you can compare and contrast historical information across the different sources available on EHM. At all times, the EHM search engine automatically connects your selection to the online flow of digital media from meaningful repositories, dynamically and in real time. On EHM, 3D models and animations help to deepen your understanding of the relationship between texts and images in ancient manuscripts. Video tutorials and reference guides will introduce you to digital history. Texts, images, videos, and sounds are available via your EHM desktop to discover stories, inspire interpretations, and ultimately create and share new content. The EHM vision is that free and reliable access to primary historical sources is a fundamental human right, able to foster peace through intercultural understanding and tolerance. Support EHM for free access to primary historical sources. Oh, okay. I hope we could hear as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so uh, here's our contribution. So we wanted to um, develop an engine um, that is able to take an image and is able to detect that object in the image in a large database of images. So we imagine you have a, a small segment and a piece of a painting, a, a patch of a painting. We'd like to look for a particular person in the painting. Yeah? Can we find that in the database? And then uh, we build an engine that can rapidly search the database and look for the same uh, visual contents. So imagine you have you know, databases with all kinds of images. You show it a particular query, you know, some visual um, contents, and it will look for that in the database and comes up with 
something that looks similar. That's, I think, quite helpful. Um, and uh, the, fo the following video provides more information. What is EHM Imager Digital History? EHM Imager assists historians in finding visual resources online. In today's world, the amount of images usable by historians is decreasing exponentially. The more images we have, the more difficult it is to find relevant images when they're necessary. Existing search engines are not sufficient because they will rely on keywords linked to the images as metadata. These keywords place severe limitations on image search. Because words belong to one specific language, metadata in another language will be left behind. And even within languages, the choice of keywords is arbitrary, it can generate ambiguity. To address this challenge, EHM explores solutions to search for images without using keywords. EHM aims to make images machine understandable and empower algorithms to learn beyond what the program to do. In image search, this can be done in multiple ways. One way is to make use of template-based matching, which works by moving a template across an image, marking regions with high similarity, and finding the best fitting location. Another approach is feature-based matching, which marks similar regions by analyzing color, shape, edges, and other relevant details of the image. Lastly, to learn beyond what the engine is programmed to do, the search engine can use deep learning methods. By providing image data, the algorithm uses multiple layers of connection to make a decision on its own. Experience image search for digital history and support DHA. Okay. So now I would like to communicate uh, some um, information about how it actually works. So uh, without being too technical, so the system first extracts features from the system, from the images, excuse me. Then, uh, so these features are vectors that contain um, statistics about the image. Uh, then uh, we, we, we perform search, meaning we compare the feature vector of the query image with the feature vectors that are stored in the database. That's uh, done by a very efficient search. And then uh, we perform ranking. And uh, once we have a short list of potential matches, we perform a re-ranking. So re-rank the matches more carefully using uh, more complex methods. So you have actually two, two stages in, in a sense. First, we do quick search. We get the first rough uh, ranking. And then we do re-ranking of the top 10, the top 100 uh, matches. That's uh, roughly how it works. Uh, typically, uh, what you have in such systems is, uh, as I mentioned, the feature extraction, and then the most modern techniques is done by uh, deep learning. Um, you can have global features, which summarize the entire image. You can have also local features, which look, look at individual patches of the image and extract features from each patch. Um, then um, those features are enhanced to better separate uh, dissimilar images and, and bring um, similar images closer together. And at last, then you have the ranking. That's the last step. That's what's uh, typically done in such methods, or at least the most recent methods. I mentioned about optimizing the features such that you can um, bring the features of similar images closer and the ones of dissimilar features farther apart. So you have different types of loss functions which are optimized. That's also kind of part of the research to find good loss functions, to find also good ways to um, extract features and do that in, a, in an efficient way so that you can actually search uh, through large uh, databases. So there are quite a few computational um, challenges which makes this problem very interesting for us uh, computer scientists. Our pipeline I have briefly described. So we have feature extraction, we extract relevant information from the images, we do a search, we match, we search uh, for similar uh, features as our query image in, in our database. And then we do, at the end, uh, after the ranking, we do re-ranking. We refine our ranking by, based on a more um, complex technique. Uh, 
to evaluate such uh, ranking systems or, or search systems, there are a few metrics that are often used. Mean average precision is the uh, coverage area under the precision recall curve. And um, also the RMAP, the relative uh, mean average precision, which compares the performance to, to a benchmark, which could be a linear scan. Also, of course, we look at the speed. So speed up is also an important factor. We want to make the system fast. At the same time, it has to reach, uh, achieve good uh, accuracy, meaning good uh, MEP. Um, well, in such research, typically do tests on many different databases, public databases, which are used for benchmarking. Um, our system uh, performs well, similar to, to the state of the art. Um, but our system is um, modular. You can actually replace certain parts and also it's open and uh, it's open source. Anyone can improve it, can modify it, can test it, etc. So in conclusion, I think I'm reaching the end, yeah. Uh, so we start out from two conjectures. One is that we can uh, modularize such um, a search uh, engine and we could achieve uh, the benchmark, so maybe outperforming, that's true. We also leave that uh, by combining data compression and uh, non-exhaustive non search. We could um, consistently achieve higher search efficiency. That's not always true. It depends actually on how you combine compression and non-exhaustive non search. So we had to try different techniques and we found them the best match. So it's not entirely trivial. Um, now, what's perhaps relevant for you is that this code is freely available. It's on GitHub. You can look at it, you can use it, you can modify it. And if you have any suggestions or comments, feedback, uh, please uh, contact us. So that's it for my talk.